all right, ladies and gentlemen, we have to have a conversation about topology. Okay, we have to go deep on this. Topology is one of those things that you have to understand. You have to go deep. You have to pay attention to this shit. Okay, this is not easy. This is kind of like, it's kind of like a music. You can pick up a guitar and play something. And nobody likes to learn about music theory. Okay, because it's like, well, what the fuck? You can still play chords. You can still do this. But music theory is the foundation behind everything. It's the mechanism behind how everything works. If you understand this, you're just going to get better. Okay, you can't consider yourself a professional if you don't understand this. Okay, this is one of those things that separates the noobs from the pros. Okay, topology is one of those things. Nobody wants to learn about it. Nobody wants to teach it. Nobody clicks on those videos. I don't give a fuck. For those of you guys who want to get good, you have to you have to pay attention to this. Okay, you have to know this stuff. This is important. You can't have a high quality model if you don't know these concepts. Okay, I'm going to give you a definition for topology. I'm going to show you why you need to know topology. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to demonstrate some things to you. I have some examples on the screen already. As you can see, we're going to go through those. And then I'm going to show you some best practices. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to show you what tools you can do, what practice you can do. And uh, I'm going to show you some more stuff. Okay, so let's start with the definition. Let's keep it simple. Okay, look, you can Google the definition of topology in 3D on the, on the Internet. It's going to give you an answer. But I'm going to try to keep it simple. The answer is that topology is simply the way that your polygons are arranged on a surface okay i'm going to give you an example so the topology is the way that your po polygons your polygons are, are are your surfaces your faces with multiple edges poly means uh multi gone is an edge okay so the way that your polygons are arranged on a surface that is a topology now you can have good topology you can have bad topology okay good topology means that your edges and your faces and your polygons are arranged well you have good arrangement of polygons. Bad topology is a bad arrangement of polygons. And I'm going to give you an example right now. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example of good topology. And I'm going to give you an example of bad topology. And then I'm going to explain why the good example is good and why the bad example is bad. All right. Let's do this. Over here, I made this little random object with some bullshit on it, some features on it or something. And uh, I'm going to show you the feature. I'm going to show you why this is good topology. Okay. So if you look over here, everything is nicely distributed. Everything is nicely distributed. Everything looks clean and equal. Everything looks nice and on point. All right. And uh, one of the main factors on this uh, element, which makes a good topology, is that it's only made up of quads. There are no n-gons. There are no long triangles or nothing weird like this. This is only quads. That's one of the key features of good topology. Okay. Now I'm going to explain to you why. I'm going to demonstrate into why topology is important. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But this right here is an example of good topology. Okay. Everything is well arranged. Everything is flowing smoothly. Everything is uh, connected properly. There's no end gons, no triangles, nothing like that. Okay. Now, bad topology. I made an object over here where I just fucked around a little bit. I tried to just intentionally make some bad topology to just to, to demonstrate what's going on over here. Okay. Bad topology. It has multiple elements. Okay. There's multiple factors that define bad topology. One of them is that you have end gons. Okay. Now, n-gons aren't necessarily a problem. If you're dealing with something like a cylinder, you can get away with them in many cases. But generally speaking, n-gons are a problem. And an n-gon is simply a surface or a face which has multiple edges, which has, which has more than four edges. Okay, an n-gon is a pentagon and up. Okay, quads are fine. Triangles are they're not preferable to quads, but they're all right. Okay, n-gons tend to be a problem. I'm going to show you later why. Okay, but an n-gon, I'm going to show you an example of an n-gon. It's this shape over here, okay? How many edges are on this surface? One, two, three, four, five, six edges. And it's not even, you know, it's, it's just a really weird shape, right? We have some more n-gons on this object. Another another one of the same type over here. We have one over here. So we have faces. Look, this one over here is a big n-gon, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can't even count that high, okay? We have plenty of edges on this surface, which is an n-gon, which is a problem. Another thing that makes bad topology is when you have this type of long triangles, okay? Over here, you have these types of long triangles, and this is a problem because you're gonna get shading issues. We're gonna talk about some of the problems that come up with uh, with bad topology a, a little bit later, but I'm just gonna demonstrate what are some what are some of these features. Okay, look how we have bad uh, we have bad we have long triangles up here. We have some weird twisting over here in this face. It's not it's not flowing evenly. Anyway, overall, this is just really bad topology. So this is when you see stuff that kind of resembles this type of whatever you're seeing over here, weird cuts and weird shapes and weird faces and long triangles. This is generally bad topology, okay? Whereas if you look again over here when we cut a hole, we don't have any end goals. We don't have any faces that have seven vertices, 11 vertices. You don't have any of these long triangles problems going on, okay? This is going to be completely perfect, okay? 
So we talked about what is the difference between good, good and bad topology. I gave you some, some examples, okay? And now I'm going to show you some problems that arise when you have bad topology and why it's important to keep this shit under control, why you need to understand how to make good topology. I'm also going to show you how to do some of these things that, that result in good topology and how to avoid having problems with bad topology. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But the first thing over here, we have our good topology model. And now let me show you something, okay? We have this model with good topology. We have nice clean bevels over here, only quads, evenly spaced, no weird triangles, nothing, okay? And we also put some smooth shading on this model. And as you can see, there are no artifacts. Everything is nice and smooth. We can go up here. We can add a subdivision surface modifier down here. We can add a subdivision surface modifier. Everything is behaving quite nicely, okay? When we add subdivision surface, it turns a little bit smoother. It turns nice. Everything is perfect because we have good topology. Everything is on point. Let me show you an example of what happens when you have bad topology, okay? We have this object right here, as we discussed, ingons, triangles, all this different shit, okay? Let's just start with shading this thing smoothly, okay? When you shade this smoothly, you have all these artifacts, okay? And now I hear you say, yeah, Aryan, okay, but this one had bevels to control the smooth shading and all this. You put some bevels and edges around it. Okay, let me show you. We can do the same over here. And look what happens when we try to add bevels. We want to add a bevel over here. I have to select all these fucking segments of edges because they're all separated by the, the different angles going on around here. So that's one thing. My tool doesn't work the same anymore. I, if I want to select all this, it's a pain in the ass. Instead of just being able to alt right click and select a circle, the tool doesn't work the same because the, the topology is all fucked up. I can add a bevel to this. Look what happens. What the fuck, right? Tools don't work the same anymore. Yeah, okay, we can add a bevel here, but what about this? Okay, T tools don't work the same anymore. Good luck adding a loop cut to something like this. Look at this shit, guy. This is a fucking disaster. You can't work with this, okay? Tools don't work anymore. Your shading is all fucked up. And we're, we didn't even st start talking about the modifiers yet. Look what happens when we add a subdivision surface modifier to this abomination of a fucking mesh, okay? Look, this shit becomes 10 times worse. Look what happens down here. What is this? This is not what you want to get when you're using a subdivision surface modifier. This looks like a fucking meteor fell and hit Earth and, and it came at an angle or like a ricochet. Shit, maybe if you're making a tank that got shot at an angle, maybe you're going to want something like this. But this is horrible. Let's look what happens when you apply this. Look at all this twisting. Look at all these angons. Look at what's happening over here, okay? I feel sick just looking at it. So this is why you don't want to have bad topology because you're going to have this type of problems. Tools don't work the same. Modifiers don't work. You get shading artifacts. Those are the three main reasons. Maybe there's something else. Uh, maybe there's something else uh, that I'm missing. But those, in my experience, are the three most important reasons. If I come up with something else, I'm going to let you know. Okay, so this is why it's very important that we have good topology. Otherwise, we're going to have this kind of problems. This is why it's very important that we have only quads. We can get away with triangles from time to time. Okay, triangles aren't necessarily a problem. Engons we want to avoid. Okay, there are certain, I'm going to show you some situations when engons are not a problem. This is why we can't just use booleans. Okay, look, this was just a boolean. So I made this hole by just using a cube and a difference, difference boolean and you cut it in. Boolean doesn't give a fuck about topology. All the Boolean does is it just cuts the hole, okay? You don't want to do that. There's better ways to cut holes, and I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? So let's start. Let's do a little exercise, and I'm going to show you how to maintain good topology, okay? So what I started with here was a cube, which I turned into a sphere, because if you use an, uh, a, a UV sphere, I'm going to show you, by the way, why triangles can be a problem. When you use a UV sphere, okay, it has triangles up here on top, okay? This, by the way, is why I don't generally use a UV sphere. It has triangles up here on top, so when you apply smooth shading, in this case it's not it's not really visible and it's not a problem. But I think it's something like if you add a, a subdivision surface modifier, you're gonna get a little bit of distortion up there or something like that. As you can see over here, you get some weird shapes up here. Okay, maybe it's gonna be different when we add the smooth shading. Okay, when we shade it smooth, you see if you look very closely, maybe we can try with a matte cap or something. You get these little, uh, you get these little distortions in the surface, right? So it's not really a perfect sphere. We got triangles, and it can be a problem. Okay, what I like to do instead to make sure my topology is on point. And excuse me for the camera lag. I tried to fix this shit by doing a bunch of different things, but it didn't work. Anyway, I like to add a cube, and I'll do something like Control Three that adds a subdivision surface modifier. Okay, you can add three levels of subdivision. We can apply that with Control A. I like to add the cast modifier. Set this to one. And then it turns this cube into a perfect sphere, okay? And you have only quads and they're all evenly distributed. And that's, that's a lot better in my experience, okay? So that's a start. That's how you make a sphere with clean topology. And now, let's say you want to cut a hole in this object, okay? Now, when we use, this sub, uh, when we use the Boolean modifier, which is the basic way of cutting holes, this is what I learned in, in the beginning. This is how they just taught me to make holes and how, this is all I knew, okay? 
you end up with this type of shit. So we don't want to use a Boolean modifier, okay? So what we can do instead is we can use a way to make a hole with clean topology, okay? So for example, what we can do, if we want to cut a circular hole, we're going to take this. I just made a short about this the other day, by the way. We can select a surface up here. Okay, let's select nine edges up here. We don't want too big a surface. We're going to select that. We're going to inset that. We're going to inset that. We're going to turn it into a circle like this, okay? And now you can extrude it in, all right? Now you can extrude it inwards. And now if you add your smooth shading, okay, we're going to add a little bevel up here. We're going to add a little bevel with a shape one, okay? Another little uh, edge down here. Now we have a nice cut over here, which doesn't have any problems. Okay, so it's, it's really that simple. Just inset some faces. I use my loop tools, by the way, to turn this into a circle. And uh, I put this, uh, I just extrude it inwards and turn it into a hole, okay? You can do the same thing going outwards. Now, there are multiple different techniques uh, to, where you can make holes and attach stuff if you want to use different shapes and stuff like that. I'm, I'm about to show you another one. Uh, but I, I elaborated on this further in my ebook. Okay, my, I wrote a little ebook about topology. I call it Blender Pro Tips. You can find the link for that description uh, for the patrons. Uh, it's available on Patreon for free. Okay, otherwise you can find it in the link. You can find it on Gumroad. And here we talk about different techniques, a little bit more of the theory about uh, topology, different techniques for attaching stuff, cutting holes, and keep maintaining good topology. For example, with the shrink wrap modifier. So if you want to learn a little bit more about this, check this out. But this is a way to cut a hole, which is a lot better. Okay. Let's say you want to cut a hole, which is in a different shape, like a cube or a square or a rectangle or something. Then we're going to use our knife tool. Now, with the knife tool, you have to be very careful because you can't just come out here and, and start uh, fucking around like this and going crazy because this is going to give you more problems. Now, you can do this, but this is going to take a little bit more cleanup. If you want to learn how to do Boolean cleanup, I, I just tend to stay away from Boolean cleanups. Check out my man, Thomas Cullen. I'm going to link his channel in the description. He's a pro pro professional at topology, okay? And he makes videos about topology cleanup, Boolean cleanup and stuff. He just put out a really good video the other day. So go check that out if you're interested in learning how to clean up Booleans. I really recommend that video. But what I like to do is I like to put myself into positions where I don't have to do any of this cleanup shit. For me, this is just annoying. I don't want like sliding vertices around. I just like to have clean holes to begin with, okay? So if you want to cut a hole, you can take your, your knife tool. And you want to make sure that you start from the center of a face like this, okay? And you don't want to go somewhere through like this. You want to try to keep it kind of so that your points and your corners are in the middle of a face. Okay, like this. You click over here, this face, that face, that face, this face, this face over here, maybe this one over here, like this, and like this. And now we can just hit enter. And now we have this little shape over here. Now, this is still bad topology because we still have these weird surfaces going on out here. We have these end gons and stuff like that. But I'm going to start connecting some of these vertices and I'm going to turn this into qu only quads, okay? So I can select over here. We have a, what is this? One, two, three. It doesn't even fucking matter, right? We're going to turn it into quads by selecting this vertex and this vertex. And then we're going to press J. You can also just use another knife tool over here to connect these two, okay? But I like to just connect them with J. And now we have two quads over here, which is perfect, all right? Over here, we have an extra vertex, which we don't need. We can get rid of this one, okay? We can just slide it somewhere away. We're going to connect this with J to turn this into quads as well. And we're going to find the same thing where we have a sharp turn. And we're going to connect uh, connect it with the outer vertex. And we're going to turn that into, uh, we're going to turn this into only quads. We're also going to get rid of this one. Now, like I said, sometimes you need to make more complex shapes, make more sophisticated shapes, which aren't going to allow these principles, in which case you're going to probably want to use a Boolean. And again, check out Thomas's video for this because he'll, he'll show you how to make really weird, crazy shapes. And you're going to be able to apply this to more, to more specific shapes, more, more specific circumstances, right? I just like to keep it simple. Generally for me, this technique works good enough. Okay. We're also going to connect this one. And now that we have this, okay, now that we have only quads, I hope I didn't miss anything. Now that we have only quads, now we can just select this entire surface. We can inset it a little bit, okay? And the reason we're insetting it is so that we're going to have a little bevel when we extrude this, which is going to control the smooth shading a little bit better, okay? And then we're just going to press E. You can extrude it in or you can just right-click and use Alt-S to extrude it in at an even rate, okay? Because the difference is that when you use Alt-S, it also shrinks as it goes towards the middle, so it keeps the shape. If you just extrude it, it keeps the same size. That's why I like to use Alt-S instead, all right? And then we can give it a little bevel up here as well. And then one more time down here. Maybe we inset it one more time at the bottom, okay? So now you have a nice clean cut in the shape of whatever we just cut out using a knife tool, okay? Maybe you're going to want to slide these a little bit further just to make sure that you don't have two, uh, two uh, thin faces over here. If you have a very thin face like this, you can get some bending like a little artifact down here. 
but if you slide it around a little bit it might end up being a little bit better it might prevent that kind of compression on the surface okay so this is one of the ways that you can you can make uh, you can make things a lot better you can make things flow a lot more smoothly all right so just keep that in mind whether you're attaching stuff it's the same principle we can just inset something turn it into a circle with your loop tools all right this is going to be a bit too big so we're going to have to make this a little bit smaller okay uh, but you can just turn this into a circle or you don't have to you can also keep it as a, as a surface like this So then just extrude it out or instead of one more time to have a little bevel out there Extrude this out and there you go. This is how you make this is how you make a clean a clean attachment to this Now you can do whatever you want and this is gonna be perfectly attached down here Okay, it looks like we still have some kind of artifacts over here, but it's still going to work a lot better uh, It's going to work a lot better than if we add a subdivision surface modifier, okay? Not if we had a subdivision, if we use a Boolean union or something like that, you know, that's going to give us a lot more problems, all right? I think the reason we had artifacts here is because we have to apply some, some uh, sharp edges over here to this side, okay, to control the smooth shading and stuff. If you want to talk more about this, just let me know. We can talk more about sharp edges and mean creases and stuff like that with subdivision surface modifiers. Anyway, another thing that we discussed in my ebook about uh, uh, about topology our loop tools okay now I have a separate video about loop tools just a three minute rundown of all the different loop tools loop tools are just a simple add-on you can find it up here references add-ons just type in loop it's already uh, uh, available by default you don't have to download anything you just enable loop tools and it's gonna give you a bunch of different tools when you go to your W so in edit mode you go to W loop tools and you have a bunch of tools I explained all these tools and, and what to use for in my separate video so you can just check that out type in Aryan loop tools or I'll just put the link in the description uh, but they're very useful for making sure you have clean topology, okay? And I'm gonna show you some examples of how you can use these and then if you want some further study on this Just find the video or maybe or check out the ebook and you're gonna find some more information about this there But I'll, I'll show you the most important ones, okay in this case We have a surface which has two holes over here and over here, okay? Let's say we were, we we're gonna extrude this to something just to maybe these are holes for something whatever, right? And these two holes are connected with some topology. So we're good. We only have quads. We're, it's not a problem. We don't have any angons. But the problem is it's still very messy. Okay, this stuff is very messy. Uh, and, and it's not evenly distributed. And if we want to inset something else over here, if we want to take some of these faces, it's very difficult to do because we get these collisions because these edges are so close together. And it's generally just not a clean surface. Okay, the topology is not bad, but it could be a lot better. All right. And this is where we're going to use some to pull, some loop tools to clean this type of stuff up. Okay, so in this case, the problem is that we have all these edges going through here, but they're not equally spaced apart. Okay, and we can very easily fix that. So we can do that by simply selecting all these edge loops where we have these edges that we want to have evenly, uh, uh, evenly separated, right? You see, this one's very long, this one's short, this one's middle, this one's very long, very long. We want to make them all the same. So we're going to select this entire uh, uh, edge over here. We're going to select this entire edge over here. And by the way, just pay attention to the shortcuts I'm using for selecting selecting edge loops. Although I'm guessing you guys already know this stuff. We're going to select all of these all of these edges out here. We're going to go to W loop tools and we're going to click on space. Okay. And look at that. It just makes them all completely evenly spaced apart, which is fucking perfect. We're also going to do the same thing back here on the uh, on the far sides on the outside. All right. We're going to select all this. We're going to do W loop tools space. And it makes it a lot more even okay we can do the same thing over here in the middle okay we can select all of these uh, segments right here and in a moment we're also going to apply the same uh, space loop tool same uh, this is the, the easier way to select this will just be to select the entire surface and then deselect all of these in edge mode okay and now we selected these edges we're gonna go loop tools space and now they're perfectly evenly spaced and look at how much cleaner that looks now if we want to inset something we can inset it we can scale it down turn it into another circle if we want to it's just generally a lot easier to work with okay now you can delete this make another hole here if you want to okay and by the way speaking of speaking of uh, holes and circles and shit like this in the beginning i told you that there are no there there are some situations when n-gons aren't a problem okay and when triangles aren't a problem one of those situations is when you have a flat surface okay if you have something like a cylinder a cylinder is going to have an end gone at the top okay now this is still a problem if you try to use subdivision surface modifier on it look at what happens this is still pretty fucked right which is and this is what's happening because of the end gone up here but what you can do is you can take these faces on the top and the bottom you can inset those faces okay just to make a little edge between the sides here and then you can maybe add another loop cut over here so basically we just have a bevel out here and now when we add a subdivision surface modifier okay 
this is a lot less noticeable. It looks a lot cleaner, okay? Now, ideally, you want to add maybe another set like this, another edge like this, just to make sure you don't have any artifacts, because otherwise, you're still going to be able to see something, right? It's a little bit, excuse me, it's a little bit crooked over here on the side. But you can get away with this end on just because it's on top of a surface. It's completely flat. There's no shading. There's no bending. Nothing's going on. So you can get away with an end on in this situation, okay? And also, if you have triangles up here, it's also going to work pretty well, okay? Like this. This is going to work pretty well, all right? So if you have triangles, it's not necessarily a problem. It's just generally preferable if you have quads because they're generally going to give you a lot less problems, a lot less shading issues and stuff like this, all right? So I showed you some techniques. Did I just delete everything from my old scene that I wanted to show, that I usually use to demonstrate? Anyway, you can just skip skip back in the video and look at look at these things again. But anyway, I showed you some examples of... So we, we talked about a definition for topology, okay? We talked about topology is just the way that you, the, your faces, the way that your edges and the vertices are arranged on a surface, okay? That is the definition of topology. You can probably find a better definition, but that's basically all you need to know in this context, all right? We talked about why you have to have good topology, okay? Why uh, you need to apply good topology because it's going to give you some problems. It's going to be hard to work with, okay? The modifiers aren't going to work. Shading is not going to work, okay? That's what we talked about. And then I also showed you some techniques that you can apply to make sure that you have good topology, okay? So if you want to create something, don't create it with the Boolean modifier. Use manual work and use a manual workflow which is going to allow you to keep only quads on a surface and going to keep allow you to maintain uh, maintain good topology and prevent all these problems that we talked about in this video, okay? So like I said, guys, if you want to see some more information about this topic, we, uh, check out my ebook. If you have any questions, let me know, okay? This is a lesson uh, that's made for Patreon. But I'm also gonna put it on YouTube so you guys can see the type of shit that we talked about. I just think it's 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 really important. Uh, it's really important that everybody understands this topic. Is this is one of the most important things to know? Okay, if you want to get good at Blender, you gotta know this shit. Okay, this is really important. You're not gonna be able to avoid it. Okay, one way or another, if you want to make good models, you need to understand how topology works. You're gonna come to a point where you're gonna be scratching your head like, oh my god, I want to create something, but I made half of this model with horrible fucking topology, and now I'm fucked. Okay. So if you start, if you use good topology the whole time, you're not gonna have any problems down the line. You're preventing yourself from getting issues further down the line as you're trying to continue modeling. Okay, so it's really important stuff. If you have any questions, let me know. Join the Discord if you have any questions. So we're gonna talk more about the more about this stuff there. There's 587 people in there talking about 3D modeling. So any questions you got, just ask them over there. You can also reach me very easily over there. I'm active on Discord almost every single day. I look forward to getting your feedback, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.